Hello friends, in this video we will talk about intellectual property. You might have heard this term intellectual property but here what we are going to discuss is to discuss this topic in the context of CISSP syllabus and uh, more uh, specifically uh, in terms of the questions which come in CISSP exams. So if we, um, if we think a bit about uh, what is intellectual property. <clears throat> Intellectual property is an outcome of human intellect, right? So the things which humans possess and do business with that, it's easy to identify. Like I'm selling some commodity, some goods, right? So this is very easy to identify. But things which we create, we need an ownership, a legal ownership of those things. Like if I create a painting, if I create some type of music, or if I create some something which is like a tool and it helps other people <clears throat> and I do business on uh, with that tool. So those kind of thing, if it is not protected with some laws and regulations, what's going to happen that people can do counterfeit, people can actually copy that idea and they will start doing business and that will disrupt the, <clears throat> the, the you know, um, what we call in business is uh, is is a fair game. A fair game will get disrupted. So things will be uh, very uneven. People who are more powerful, they have more strength. They are gonna overpower people who are not so uh, strong in the society. And there will be a chaos basically. So to deal with that, there are laws and those laws we are gonna discuss in this video. So let's go to the drawing board and see what we can quickly understand about intellectual property. Before I put my ideas on intellectual property, I would like to share this article with you. This article was published in New York Times and uh, what was the date? Um, it was published on 16th April 2020. I will put a link of this article in my video so that you can go and check this article. This is a very beautiful article. It is well uh, articulating uh, the difference between copyrights, trademark and patents. So these are the these are three major categories of intellectual property which we discuss in CISSP. But there is one more thing uh, that's called um, a trade secret which is not uh, discussed here. So while we go uh, we go on discussing this thing on whiteboard, this is equally important that we do some reading of this article. It's not too long. It, it should be like um, five to eight minutes of uh, reading. And it's very interesting. It's not, uh, it's not a boring stuff here. So you will definitely like it. And this is highly recommended. So check on the link which is there, uh, which will appear uh, somewhere uh, around this time on the top right corner. And uh, you can refer this article to get some details on it. Now let's come to the uh, to the whiteboard, sorry, the drawing board. So intellectual property in CISSP, uh, let me write it down here. Intellectual property. Some people only say IP, intellectual property. So intellectual property is a product of human intellect. That's why we need a need some specific laws to to deal with this subject, right? Now these intellectual properties are of basically uh, four types. Uh, let me see if it is only four types. Let me write it down. So they they are copyright. Copyright. And then we have something called trademark. Then we have patent. And then we have trade secret. So let's discuss one by one copyright. So copyright is something which we create like some painting. So we write something or we make some sculpture or we make some music or video or we do some choreography. So those kind of thing fall under copyright. So there are basically eight categories. I will just note it down here. 
so that we have all these things in our mind so there could be this could be literary work in terms of some novels publication some poem you know those kind of thing then we have some musical work dramatic work <clears throat> there is something called pantomimes and choreographic works right then pictorial graphical <clears throat> and a sculpture so one two three four five then we have motion pictures and videos basically right uh, audio visual work one two three four five six two more sound recording and architecture right so sound recording architecture if you look closely all these items are basically a result of human creativity so they need uh, uh, some sort of authorship some sort of uh, like uh, uh, ownership of the origin so that will be covered into copyright law right so copyright law basically when we when we talk copyright law laws we often refer to um, a law which is called uh, dmca right so dmca is basically basically digital millennium copyright act which gives um, gives a rule or which gives some sort of uh, uh, some sort of uh, legal uh, standing a legal definition of what is copyright right so this legal definition actually classifies these eight type of work which which, which falls under copyright and now dmca basically uh, put some some timelines and penalties for, uh, for for timeline for the copyright work and and the penalties if someone infringes the copyright basically so what is um what is the timeline for copyright work so if a person does something um, unique uh, and it falls under copyright so he can file uh, for the copyright uh, uh, ownership actually when someone creates something uh, the copyright starts from that time itself but people can go and register this into the into their respect respective copyright office which is actually designated by the governing body of that state or the country basically so once a copyright is registered if this is a this is done by a person or a group of people which is not an organization like like some individual individuals like three people have written a book or a single person has written a book so the timeline is uh, is actually 70 years after the death of last surviving author right so uh, let's take an example if a book was uh, published in year 1900 right so uh, so once the book is published right and uh, it was it was written by three people let's take this example and the and the last person was uh, actually died on 1910 right so the copyright will still be there uh, 70 years more so that will be 1980 so till 1980 the 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 work which was done by the other person will remain under copyright act right or if this work was done by some company or work for hire right under some contract so this is plus 95 years 
right so it will be like how much so 5 2005 right 0, 055 0, right till 2005 so this is how we calculate the uh, the life span of uh, copyright basically <clears throat> So 95, so you know, provided production for 95 years from the date of first publication or 120 years from the date of creation, right? So either 95 years from the date of publication or 120 years from the date of creation, whichever is less. So that's, uh, that's the rule for copyright. Now DMCA was, uh, was actually uh, introduced in year 1998. And if someone does copyright infringement, then the penalty is $1 million and 10 years in prison, right? So let me write it down as well. So $1 million is the penalty plus 10 years of imprisonment. Now there are certain, uh, certain sub clause which exempt ISPs because ISPs carry traffic. So they don't originate the traffic. There are certain uh, criteria ISPs has to maintain so that they can say that they are not infringing copyright or some libraries and schools, they have copyright exemption in, in, in publishing some work to students as a homework or something, right? So that's, uh, that's all about copyright. Um, I think uh, um, there are some some you know dmca exemption we should know uh, when it comes to uh, isps it's there in the book i think you can refer it um, it's not uh, gonna gonna be very much exa exam sensitive um, yeah but uh, we should know that uh, the the time limit for copyright is i think this is the maximum uh, maximum allowed time for any intellectual property uh, to hold a legal value uh, that's copyright next come the patent basically the so patent is for 20 years then it it becomes public one more thing we have to know we have to um, keep in mind that copyright and patent eventually will become public after some time we can't hold them in the, you know uh, we can't hold them under some of proprietary ownership since you know in since infinite time like um so copyright maximum is 95 years or 120 years then it will become public <clears throat> then patent patent will be like uh it will be uh it will be made public after 20 years right the only thing which is uh, kept sec secret and this is never made public is trade secret so trade secret you can relate this as a as the private key in asymmetric cryptography it's never made public so how do we how do we uh, um, ensure its secrecy we ensure its secrecy by putting some security controls and having non disclosure agreement with employees who deal with the um, with the maintenance transportation and all the interaction with the secret formula so that's how we tend to um, tend to say tend to actually um, secure trade secrets basically. Now let's go to the trademarks. Uh, let me let me go to some details here. Just a minute. As you know that the trademarks are basically um, some symbols or letters or logos which symbolizes the company, right? And uh, if if you if you create a trademark you you use this word tm if it is not registered in uh, in the trademark office so in united states you have united states patent and trademark office so united states patent and trademark office right so this is the office where we actually register a trademark once it is registered then you have uh, this symbol uh, r with a circle right now this trademark is actually registered every for every 10 years you have to do re-registration and uh, you can basically uh, 10 years registration and it can go up to infinity can go till any time 
so that's uh, that's called trademark when it comes to patent basically patent should have anything which we create uh, which we develop if it has three qualities uh, then then it's qualified to be called patent right so what are these three qualities that the the invention which we are gonna call it as a patent it should be first new first quality should be new second quality that it should be useful and the third quality of patent should be that it should not be obvious right so if we create something which is new which is useful and it's not obvious it's an effort it's an it's an intellectual effort to create something which which never existed before right so that's that's called patent right so patent is um, basically um, uh, granted the you know uh, utility utility patents protect the intellectual property right of inventors they provide a period of 20 years from the type of time of the invention during which the inventor is granted exclusive rights to use the inven invention right so um what we can say here is um, the time frame here is 20 years so 20 years the patent is granted after 20 years it will become public right so uh, that's how patent work now trade secrets are something which i already said that um it's a secret formula you can't have a legislation saying that I'm going to register because once you are going to go and register something, it, it will in somehow will be disclosed to the people who are going to register it. Right. So what you do, you maintain the secrecy with the security controls you have in your organization. And then you you have this non-disclosure agreement. NDAs signed with your employee that you that no one is going to violate the um the the trade secret if if if, if they even uh, you know manage to know it right now there is a strict penalty which is um which is uh, part of the trade secret exposure and it is drafted under something called uh, uh sp Nage act like economic sp act right of 1996 right so in 1996 this act came in and it actually imposed a penalty of five hundred thousand dollars plus uh, 15 years of jail if if someone uh, exposes um, uh, a trade secret Right, so trade secrets are often the uh, you know a very very uh, secret things for major corporations, and the U.S. government recognized the importance of protecting this type of intellectual property. Now, if someone steals a trade secret and it is used um, by some foreign government or agent, so this will be the penalty: five five hundred thousand dollars fine plus fifteen years jail. But if, if it is not for any foreign government or agent, but for some other purpose, then the fine will be uh, $250,000 plus 10 years of jail, right? So this is um, basically trade secret, right? So that's all about intellectual property here, copyright, trademark, patent, and trade secret. Now, in addition to that, we have licensing, like software licensing, right? End user license agreement, those kind of thing. Uh, let's discuss discuss those things in a in a different video. But uh, I will I will take some more time here just to let you know that this topic is um, is something which is exam sensitive. So you should you should know the clear difference between copyright, trademark, patent, and top and, and trade secret. What are the different timelines? The maximum protection is guaranteed by copyright uh, protection, and the uh, minimum is for uh, patent uh, in terms of uh, maintaining the legal ownership of the invention or the creation. Like creation, we use in copyright, invention, we use in patent. 
Now, trademark is, is public. There is nothing to hide. You know, uh, everyone knows what is the logo or, you know, and every 10 years we kind of um, renew it. With trade secret, uh, we always use NDA. We use internal security control so that trade secret is not exposed to public. And uh, the law which acts on, on maintaining trade secret is Economic Espionage Act of 1996. And for uh, DMCA, it was, DMCA was, I think, 1998, if I'm not wrong. 1998, let me just check it again. Uh, yeah, DMCA was 1998. So, these dates are not important, but if we have this in mind, it serves as, a, as an added knowledge, right? So let's discuss licensing in another video. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the content, you can put a thumbs up. You can always give me suggestions, feedback on my content and how we can improve uh, the quality of the content. And if you really like uh, the content and my, my channel, you can subscribe to my channel. It will give me some added confidence, added uh, you know uh, um, uh, motivation to continue my work. Thanks for watching the video. Let's meet in another video.